Hi everyone, hope you all are excited about this episode because I am so happy that the one and only Desiree Ortman could join me. Desiree is changing the world of photography as she is a portrait photographer specializing in high school seniors, teens, dancers, and performers. Her personality is extremely positive, bubbly, and beyond kind. She is the type of person that you seriously cannot get enough of. Desiree has an amazing message and I am so happy that we get to share it with you all. So let's do it. Desiree, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. I'm really excited for this episode because I was just telling you, I remember when we were meeting you, it was pouring rain and we were walking in it. Where was it? It was, it was actually, it's, it was the Maryland Creative Collective, London. which is no longer. Oh, really? Yeah. They sold the business to two other girls. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but so when we were coming in and mom was like, mom was with us and Kenzie and I were like oh my gosh it's pouring rain our outfits are like <laughs> probably not going to be as good as the other girls and we were walking up the steps and we hear like this loud bu- bubbly positive voice and we were like okay you know what it's fine it's fine it like easily calmed us the second we heard you um but to start us off can you just tell us a little bit about yourself Sure. So my name's Desiree, but I go by many other names. Um, all of my closest friends call me Des. I pretty much tell anyone um, that I meet Des is much easier than Desiree. Um, growing up, I was Desi. And then <laughs> when I graduated college and went into like the workforce, I was Desiree because if I said my name was Desi, they said, thought my name was Debbie. Um, so I went back to Des after I met my husband. So I have lots of names. Um, I'm from Bel Air, Maryland, actually. So I live maybe 15 minutes from mm-hmm. where I grew up. Um, I went to Seamount Wright High School, graduated in 1999. And then um, afterwards, I actually went to Towson for a year to dance. Um, there's a whole story around that. I won't get into it. But then I transferred to the University of Delaware and I graduated right. from there in 2003. Um, I was a communications major, um, kind of with, you know, really no idea of what I wanted to do when I went into school. And when I graduated, I ended up getting a job with Black & Decker in sales, which is hysterical because I drove around in a big, huge yellow <laughs> I truck. Can't imagine. I wore c- like construction <laughs> boots and a construction hat. And most of my friends were boys. And I learned about power tools. And like to this day, I can still school like any dude <laughs> in power tools. Um, but like after I had kids, um, I thought that I really didn't want to work like this 40 mm-hmm. hour a week, nine to five type yeah. lifestyle and wanted to spend some time with my kids. So okay. um, after I had my daughter when I was 30, I left my job at Black & Decker and then I kind of dabbled in a bunch of things and then landed in like this photography uh, career in 2017. Okay, cool. So how did, how did photography like come a part of your story? So you were like dabbling in whatever you were doing, all these different hobbies. And then how did you know that that was your passion? So the thing I always tell people, I was like the photography like friend. I always had a camera like back. I mean, I'm dating myself, but like <laughs> 1994, 95, I was always the kid with a digital camera yeah. or, um, not digital, um, disposable camera. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I was always the one that had all the pictures. So I would bring like a disposable camera everywhere we went. I would get all the pictures developed. We'd make copies of them for all of our friends. I had scrapbooks upon scrapbooks going through high school. I was just like always the photo friend. Like yeah. I, um, was in yearbook, um, in high school and journalism. And I loved everything about photography, but yeah. I always thought you needed to like have like an art major to like study photography. And I was not super artistic. Like I couldn't really draw. Mm -hmm. I was creative um, and artsy, but I couldn't, I didn't think I had the skills to be a photographer. So I was like, okay, this is just kind of a fun thing. Um, And then when I got my job with Black & Decker, I worked in photography. Like I didn't, Mm -hmm. I went on photo shoots and I was responsible for kind of getting the photos that would be used on packaging and merchandising okay. and things like that. So I was a part of the process. But again, I was like, oh, this isn't for me. I'm yeah. not like this artsy, creative person that, you know, can yeah. work a camera and develop film and all that. And it wasn't until uh, it was when I was pregnant with my daughter, my husband got me a camera and was like, I thought this would be a really fun way to document oh, our kids. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'll figure out how to use it. And I remember like being at home and I'm shooting a fan trying to get (laughs) to see how I can like get the, like the blades on the fan to like blur and I couldn't get it to work. And I'm on YouTube and Google. I couldn't figure it out. My husband's like, why don't you just take a class? Yeah. And so I took a class at Hartford Community College. Okay. I learned how to get off of auto, which that was my problem. That's why I couldn't shoot the fan the way I wanted (laughs) and shot in manual. And I just kind of was, it was a hobby. I did pictures for friends for like, probably like five years Oh wow! Um, of just like, oh, I don't want to sp- like pay for a maternity photo session. Can you just take maternity photos? And yeah. they were, if I showed you, I mean, I'm embarrassed like to look <laughs> at that work now, but um, I just kind of did it for fun. And yeah. everyone was like, you need to start a business. And I was like, um, no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, this is just a hobby. I'm mm-hmm. not really like, you know, yeah, this isn't 
this isn't my job. This yeah. is my career. Um, I just I have to do it for fun. So I kind of always just thought, oh, I'm just, you know, having fun over yeah. here. So what was that like, like coming from a, um, making it a hobby? Like right now, so sometimes I think about, someone asked me like, yesterday, we were at Hershey Park with our friends. And the girl, our friends that we were with, she was like, why isn't your podcast? Like, why do you guys make money from it? Whatever, we're talking about all that. I'm like, no, it's strictly just a hobby and something sure. I love to do. Sure. Um, so what was that like turning a hobby into a job? It, it took like? a really long time. And yeah. honestly, I think if you talk to any like woman entrepreneur, yeah. um, any age, there's this period of the I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. And so for a good probably five years, I was like, I'm not good enough to charge people yeah. for this. Um, and honestly, like it wasn't until it was 2017, it was September, a friend said, can you shoot a wedding? We're getting married. Our wedding was canceled. It was supposed to be in, I don't know, Punta Cana or okay. an island and the hurricane oh, hit. Wow. And they said, we're getting married at the courthouse. Can you come shoot it in downtown Bel Air? And I was like, I don't even have like a good enough camera to do this. <laughs> so I called a friend and I was like, she was a photographer. I was like, can I just like borrow a lens that you think would work like in a courthouse? Like yeah. what I have is not gonna like work. I, you know, I could really like use some help. She was like, absolutely no problem mm-hmm. at all. Here, she gave me her camera and gave me two of her lenses and said, yeah. have at it. And I shot the wedding. The couple loved the photos, but yeah. I was like not super proud of it. I was like, they're good, but like yeah. not something I would want to pay a lot of money for. Um, and one of the pictures that I shot on downtown Main Street, literally right outside of yeah. where we're like filming this today, um, I shot a picture of the couple in the median mm-hmm. and the couple posted it on Facebook, tagged me and a friend of mine that works for the Aegis, our local paper, yeah. said, I love this. Can I share their story in the paper? And my photo was on the cover. That's so cool. And I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe I am good enough. Yeah. And so it was one little event that kind of sparked this whole like, right, yeah. oh, wait a second, I actually can do this. And so yeah. from that point on, I bought the camera I needed, the lenses I needed. I told my husband, like, I'm going to actually make an effort. I'm going to yeah. get a website and try to market this business. And I started real like simple. I mean, what I was charging yeah. was like nowhere near <laughs> like where we are today. But um, it was one thing that kind of yeah. gave me that it was this whole confidence thing. I was almost in my own head. I probably could have made it something bigger, right. but it was making that decision that I am good enough mm-hmm. to actually like call yeah. myself a photographer. And even I listened to an interview. Um, oh gosh, I'm going to like, no, can't totally remember fine. who it was, but um, calling my, I couldn't call myself a photographer for the longest yeah. time. Like if they said, what do you do for a living? I'm a stay at home mom. Okay. I take photos like I yeah. I do photography on the side. Yeah. And it wasn't I don't think it was probably like a year ago that like right around when you guys started, I was like I'm a photographer. Like I feel <laughs> like my work is good enough that I can yeah. say that that is what I am now. Yeah. And it just took a really long time to get there. And I think so many people like yeah. have a lot of those like a little in- bit. Yes, like even like me with the podcast which I love doing. Um it's a little bit of a mental block and you know our stories are com- a little bit different, completely different, but um, I feel like a lot of people will have this mental block on where they're like, am I this? Am yes. I good enough for yeah. this? So I think even like everyday decisions that we're making, like, am I okay to do this? Like, am I you know strong enough to do this? Like when running Chicago, I was like, am I too bold? Is this like when I was telling people, um, I had a lot of people that were like, oh, okay, yeah. like, let's see <laughs> yeah. how this goes. But I was like, no, I'm actually going to run. And um, for the longest time I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm a runner. Like, am I a runner? Like yes. even today I'll be like, am I a marathon runner? <laughs> sure. And dad's like, did you run 26.2 yes, miles? You and I was are. like, I did. <laughs> yes. But it's still weird. So I still kind of understand like yes. what you're talking about. I'm, and I'm sure like a lot of people are yes. still going through that. It was Melissa McCarthy. Oh my gosh. She, the favorite actress ever. Yes. She wouldn't call herself an actress. She yeah. like couldn't like recognize like I made it. I yeah. am an actress. And it's, you look at her and she's fantastic. She's my favorite. Yeah. Like, I will tell that to anyone. Dad knows yes. it. Like, I've seen all of her movies. Um, back yeah. my favorite. But it's funny because you but wouldn't think someone like, that looks so confident like, right. on screen. And that and, is so big in yeah, what she does. Exactly. Right? It took her so long to yeah. be like, I am an actress. So, yeah. you know, obviously, like, my love for photography and photos. And, it, yeah. you know, that stems from the fact, like, I love creating memories. Mm-hmm. And to me, like, at the end of the day, when someone, we just put our dog down last week. Okay. And at the end of the day, all you have left is... Right. those photos yeah and they capture all those little Maybe moments and mm-hmm. honestly I mean doesn't I mean half of those photos I took right literally when I first got my camera and I didn't know how to do like <laughs> shoot cool manual things. I was like oh god the dog's hair is like orange I don't know why her hair is orange I don't know how to edit this you know but I have that photo yeah you know and that's kind of why I've always loved 
photographies and photos because my mom was always the yeah. mom that had 800,000 like that. albums yeah. sitting and even now that like we'll bring our kids there and we yeah. look through the photos and we're like oh you remember the time when yeah. you know this happened or that happened no so. I like I so when I was younger I didn't think I realized how big like we were as a photo family my dad not a photographer but he would have like a little like is it Nikon 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 <laughs> I was close yes um camera and he would literally photog- like photograph everything our grandfather has been filming us like videos and I think before maybe 2020 he stopped because he got a new camera and doesn't know how to like a video <laughs> camera and he doesn't know how to use it and he's like girls tell me but I yeah. haven't gotten the chance to yeah. um but we have everything filmed and I like even though today like I like the kids we babysit I love taking photos and making scrapbooks mm-hmm. even though like I have no idea I really had to take a real photo I'm just like snap say cheese yes. and but I just don't think some people don't realize how important a photo is yes. right like yeah. even in like and I can totally connect with you losing a like a loved one or a dog you have all these videos like I literally have tons of videos and photos of yeah. Zoe and it's it just kind of it like kind of fills the gap a little bit mm-hmm. only a little bit but like it's still like it's like oh this is how you know how happy she was during yes. this time yep. so I love it too yep um but tell us a little bit more so you were growing your brand so you realized that you wanted photography Mm -hmm. to be no longer a hobby but a job and what was it like in the first couple of years like trying to get your name out there um honestly the biggest thing for me was figuring out like where my space was Mm -hmm. because when I first started I was like all over the board like the first thing that I did that was like the catalyst for this was a wedding and I was like am I a wedding photographer? Do I want to work every weekend? That's like a huge space to be in. Like, Mm -hmm. do I have to go to wedding shows to market myself? Um, That felt like very unachievable. So Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe families is the right space. Um, And I love families. And I, that's, they honestly were my bread and butter (laughs) from the very beginning. Um, But it, there was something that was like missing um, from them. I love the connection, the emotion. I love capturing that memory. Um, And it wasn't until I did my first senior that I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, I always say I'm a con- like a control freak and I like controlling every single detail. <laughs> and with families, you just kind of have to let it go, especially yeah. with young kids. It's like, if the kid wants to run around, like we're just going to let him run around. If the kid is going to have a meltdown, we're going to take like a 20 minute break and come back. Yeah. Um, and you don't necessarily have control over every detail. Um, I thought for a second I wanted to do newborns because I loved, I followed all these newborn photographers on Instagram and I love the cute little babies. And I did a few newborns and I was like, this is not the space for me. <laughs> like you have zero control. You talk yeah. about like control. They cry, like you are waiting it out. Yeah. You're jiggling for 30 minutes trying to get the baby to go to sleep <laughs> and nothing's working the way you want it to work. Yeah. Um, and so I did that for a little bit. Um, I dance. I was a dancer like growing up and through college. And so I started working with dancers and that was another like spark that I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is feeling like definitely a passion that I have for like this art form and combining like these two passions together. Mm-hmm. So um, I knew I wanted to somehow narrow into those two, but just starting out, I felt like I just needed to cast a wide yeah. net and just get my name out there as much as possible. Yeah. Where we live in Hartford County, there are probably, I don't even a hundred photographers yeah. and most of them do families. So you're competing with everyone and it's all just kind of like a price game. And mm-hmm. so I was like, what could be my niche? But yeah. at the beginning, I feel like it was hard for me to niche down because I didn't want to just pigeonhole myself. And what if there wasn't a market for it? What if people didn't see a value in spending money on unique senior photos? Mm-hmm. Like, what if people were fine with the ones that you got from school? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, in Hartford County, you go in, you get your cap and gown photo, <laughs> your drape photo. And for most people, that's fine. Yeah. Like, would kids really want a different experience? And I started following a lot of photographers like across the country and they were doing it so differently. And I was like, it just seemed more fashion forward and editorial based. And I was like, I always wanted to work for a magazine. That was mm-hmm. the other thing. Um, back when I was in high school and I was in journalism, I thought, oh, I'm going to work for like a magazine in New York City. And then someone's like, you know, you don't really make a ton of money doing that. Because I majored in communication. Yeah. And I was like, that's I'm going to do journalism. Like, that's yeah. what I want to do. And someone's like, well, if you want to like work on a news station or like for a newspaper, you're moving to like the middle of nowhere, making not very much money. And I was like, oh, well, I don't really want to do that. So I switched to public relations and yeah. went down that path for a while. So I was always wanting to work for this ma- this magazine dream. And now with these seniors, I feel like I take each of those shoots and kind of turn them into their own little like yeah. magazine editorial, um, but for like that child and that yeah. family. Um, so niching down was like a big thing for me to kind of figure right. out and that took I mean I would say last year was the first year that my seniors outweighed 
all of my other clients. That's crazy. Um, the first year, I think I only had, so in 2018, I maybe had two to three seniors. Okay. 2019, I might've had like 10. And I think last year I probably had over 50. Right. So That's it insane. took a while to get to that point. Yeah. And now, I, now I've gotten to the point where like, I'm no longer taking newborns. Yeah. I'll do family, but it's only for like my existing clients yeah. that I've built relationships with. Right. Um, and the other piece I did add in this year, which has always been in the background, was um, branding photography. Okay. Which in our market, I mean, we're not yeah. inundated with like a lot of like, small businesses that have budgets mm -hmm. to do big branding shoots. Right. Um, but my background at Black & Decker was in brand. I did brand marketing for yeah. six years. So um, bringing that Time into the fold. To use, yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of overlap too with you know senior girls and like women-owned businesses. We as women all have like the same kind of like general feelings about photos. We both yeah. are a little uncomfortable in front of the camera. Yeah. And my goal was to always make people feel confident <laughs> Um, and beautiful in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. So um, again, it's another reason we kind of gravitate yeah. towards like seniors. No, yeah. So, um, but tell us this is a fun question. Yes. What is life like as a photographer? Uh, insane. I know you're. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw your post. You're like, I am booked for the next insane many here's, months. Here's the thing. The whole reason, like my why, yeah. like everyone talks about, like in business, like what is your why? Like why yeah. do you do this podcast, right? My why is really so that I can have control of my schedule and be home with my kids. Yeah. When I left my job at Black & Decker, I didn't leave to go work another 80 hour a week job and be away from my family. So when I started this business, it was a way to bring in income for my family in a way that's controlled by me. Mm -hmm. So I control my hours so that I can get my kids to and from school. Right. I can get them to their sports. I can afford to pay for some of the extras that, you know, my kids like to do. Um, so that was always like number one. Um, when you throw in a, like your own business, photography or not, any business into that family mm -hmm. mix, it's insanity. And my kids yeah. now are at the age where they're involved in multiple sports and activities. So um, right now it's getting <laughs> to be crazy. busy because you know my seasons are like cyclical. So most of my shooting occurs between call it May and November. Okay. I do usually in the summer have a little bit of a gap like in July with vacations. Yeah. Next week kicks off senior season. So <laughs> next Friday through probably like the first or second week of December, yeah. I'm shooting a minimum of two to three sessions a week. Oh my and then on top of the sessions, which I think is like a, not a misconception, but I don't think people realize is yeah. more than half of my work happens on the back end. So all I'm out shooting, like if I'm shooting, you know, now all my seniors get makeup with their session. So yeah. they're starting, they get an hour of makeup. We have to drive to our session. We're shooting for two hours. I drive home. Then I come home, I upload, I go through all the images, I pick the sneak peeks, I edit the sneak peeks, and then I'm editing a full session. Right. Um, you know, it, and it's a lot of photos. It's a I lot, mean, and so noticed. there's I, yeah. a lot of my editing happens between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. <laughs> um, when my kids are asleep because yeah. I want to make sure I spend time with them. Um, I edit while they're at school, so the summer's really challenging juggling yeah. the schedule. <laughs> um, you know, and I do try to make all my sessions different, so I'm not just shooting in Hartford County. Like right. next week, I'm going to New York That's and so shooting funny. a few sessions there. Um, I'm traveling a few different places this year for different clients, which is great. So. Yeah. It ebbs and flows, and I say it's insane, but it's part of that is my own life. Yeah, part of that is fitting this into. It's crazy. If I was single, if I was like your age and shooting, this would be like a dream. <laughs> I could shoot probably like twenty sessions a yeah. week, but um, it's insane in a good way yeah. because I'm fitting it into the parts of my life where I have right. time. So and you're still learning how like to balance it all. I'm sure this year is a big. <laughs> this year was a we. I'm cutting back this year. Yeah. I'm limiting that because last year I was shooting like seven days a week, and then trying to edit. I, there was one point when I was like, I'm 20 sessions behind in editing. Yeah. How in the world am I gonna like catch up? Mm -hmm. So and even like I was doing like at least one wedding a month. Next year I only have one wedding, and I'm okay. probably gonna phase out. Yeah, of weddings, weddings also so I can really devote time to like my seniors yeah so um so we talked about you know your goal your journey as a um photographer was there ever a moment where you think you lost you felt like you lost your passion or in those moments where you're like I don't know what I'm gonna shoot this person or what this idea is was there ever a moment in your journey where you were like I don't know if this is for me anymore <sighs> never not for me that's yeah. I haven't gotten up because I've only been really doing this for five years yeah so I haven't gotten to that point, but there's definitely like points of like imposter syndrome where yes. I wonder if I'm good enough. Yeah. And half of that comes from social media. Yeah. If I get off social media and don't look at anybody else's stuff, then I feel really good about where I'm at. 
But if I'm scrolling and I find like a photographer like in the middle, I don't know, we'll call it Ohio. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she just shot the most amazing, you know, flower field session. And yeah. hers are so much better than mine were. Yeah. Um, it's so easy to get into that cycle. Right. And it ebbs and flows. Right now I feel really good. Yeah. Um, because the last session I did, sadly, the more feedback I get on social media, I mean, this is just like an innate human yeah. response. I feel really good about where I'm at. Yeah. But then if I do another session and it doesn't get as much hype, then I'm like, oh, maybe that wasn't as good. Yeah. Um, and I think we do it to ourselves. Yeah, I think we do it all the time. Yeah. Even like, like a guy I keep like referring back to the podcast, but even with like here listening to other podcasts or like even seeing like who people, if I have, I have like lists of like people that I want to have on podcasts, people I've asked. Um, and like, and then if some of those people that I want to have on my podcast are like on all these podcasts, but yes. they, they won't respond to, you yes. know, my letter yep. or my email. It's like, Oh, why, why don't they, they get it? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm not big enough, whatever, but I still like, I think that's something we all struggle with. And even yeah. social media seeing like yes. all these things, clothing, well, even, I'll see everything. kids and I'll be like, wait, I know that family. Why didn't they ask me to exactly. do their pictures? Yeah. Um, I think that's just a down the downside of social media. If it didn't yeah. exist, I probably would feel really good. Yeah, because you have no idea about where I'm at. Because I have no yeah. idea what anyone else is doing. And you know, I have a, a few very close photographer friends yeah. I talk to on like a daily basis. It's all the same. Like yeah. they do the same thing. Even if like one of my best friends is a newborn and family photographer, and she does the same exact thing on yeah. social media. She's scrolling and like, but look at her work, and look at this house she shot in, and look at this client, and look at <laughs> you're like and you're no, like stop. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stop. And yeah. I think I mean that's. I, you can even say the same for like my kids. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, like that kid is so much more well behaved than my child that's screaming. Right. <laughs> like, it's just, it's this comparison. No, yeah. no it is. That it's, it's ongoing. All the time. And it's a matter of getting out of your own head. Exactly. And mm -hmm. like, I, yeah, I agree that everybody is doing it. And I think like even social media, like I was talking to um, Catherine Miller about this the other day when I saw her. I was like, there's so many positives to social media. Like, let's think about like the way, like this podcast, like how I've gotten it out to everybody yeah. is strictly through social media. Oh yeah, and, sure. I mean, word of mouth as well, but um, like being able to share stuff like that. I'm sure like you and being able to yeah. show your photos and your marketing and everything like that. But I think just, like ways to kind of flop your social media view, like to mine, I want to make my you know, feed more positive yes. in a way, but I feel like there's always going to be some like little voice in the back of my head that's like, mm, I want that or how do I not have this or I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah. All these things that can yes. run into your head. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yes, totally. Um, so where do you find your inspiration? I mean, we were just talking about your footloose shoe, yes. which, you know, <laughs> <laughs> was a ton yes. of our favorites. Um, where do you find your ins inspiration? All over. And I know it's like the most generic answer, yeah. probably. Um, I love Pinterest. Yeah. I'm a big fan of, I don't like replicating anything like verbatim. Like I'm never one for like jacking an idea up. To me, like originality is key. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of times either I'm scrolling Instagram, like uh, like fashion magazines, I'll see something and I'll be like, ooh, that would translate really cool into, you know, X, Y, or Z. Like the mm -hmm. Footloose shoot honestly was, you know, that started with, okay, this class of 2023 coming in is the first class that'll have a normal right. school year. That was literally the first like ounce of inspiration for that shoot was, you know, the class of 2020 was robbed of the back, back mm -hmm. half of their senior year. The class of 2021, it was like entire, it was just a cluster all, in, all yeah. over. And even you guys, the beginning part of this year mm -hmm. for most kids in Hartford County, it was still like, are we going to have a homecoming? Are we exactly. wearing masks? Yeah. And so at the end of last year, everyone was starting to get all the normals back. And so the class of 2023 was like the first class that gets everything back and they'll right. get prom and homecoming and graduation and all those things. And I was thinking, you know what? Footloose, like they couldn't have a dance you know, because of like all the restrictions in their community, obviously not illness related, yeah. but like that's what all these kids dealt with. And so yeah. like, how can we celebrate the return of these proms? And then I, it spiraled from there. I was like, well, how can I emulate Footloose without it being like an exact replica, but bring it into like 2022 in a nice way. Yeah. Um, and so that's how like I that one it. started. But yeah. like your shoot that you did with mm -hmm. me last year, um, Keith Herring, I was scrolling on, it was either Instagram or Pinterest, or I don't even know what, or someone had a shirt on. And I was like, that's cool. And I never really like dove into who yeah. like Keith Herring was in it, as an artist. And I was like, this would really translate cool into a shoot. Mm -hmm. Obviously not like an exact replica of his painting, but, but like this idea like of like this black and white base with these vibrant pops of color. Right. Um, so I find myself looking at either, you know, other artists inspiration or even like, you know, some sort of like fashion editorial, like what would Vogue do kind of. Right. Um, and 
even trends that are popular. Like I just, I'm not going to spill the beans because it's, it's coming out in like four weeks. But my next shoot, I mean, it's derived right. off of probably one of the most popular shows. It's on television. Yeah. And I'm thinking about my market and my audience and what are kids watching and what yeah. are they like inspired by. Um, and I take that idea and then it's kind of like a hodgepodge of like, what would this look like in my head and trying to find images right. that and then illustrate. Put it into light. Yeah, because for me, even like when I was, like when I started planning like your mm-hmm. shoot um, with your sister, like trying to decipher what you all wanted, but right. make it come to life in the way that you envision it in your heads. Yeah. I know kind of what, when you showed me your outfits, I was like, okay, I know how I want to do this, but how do I illustrate to you? Right. So I try to take- Because like, I'm like, a, I have no idea. Yeah. Well, and I went on and I was like, okay, I'm going to yeah. go on Instagram, Pinterest. I'm going to pull a bunch of photos and be like, yeah. if you took all these pictures together and threw them on a picture, this is yeah. what your photo shoot would look like. Yeah. Because um, I think sometimes like- people that are in the creative space, they see it themselves in their head, but communicating that out right, yeah. to the universe no, is yeah. sometimes challenging. Definitely. So, um, but yeah, so I gave you a very like no. I splat love it. answer. I love of- it though. <laughs> <laughs> but so we've talked about, you know, we met through me becoming part of your senior group. So yes. do you want to talk about a little bit about how you started that? And then what do you do with your specific like sure. class of 2022 seniors? Sure. So that actually was one of the goals I set when I first decided it was probably 20... 20- 19 that I said, Mm -hmm. I really want to focus on seniors. I had seen all these other photographers like across the country and they had these, they called them senior model teams. And I was like, okay, that sounds like a really Mm -hmm. cool, like grassroots marketing effort. How can I make this happen? So my goal was I want to have a rep team that kids want to apply to. And that I'm like going through an application process and selecting kids. But when I started, I was like, how in the heck do I, you just can't throw out an application when people don't even know you're really like in the senior space. Like, how do I even do that? Mm -hmm. Um, And honestly, I I thought about like hiring like a coach that could help me, like another photographer across the country that could help me. And I was like, I think I could be, I mean, I used to work in marketing. Like this essentially is a grassroots, it's like a brand ambassador program. Mm -hmm. Like we would have like back at Black & Decker, like people that we would send products to and they would post on like social media. Like I helped orchestrate those. So I know I could do it. How do I do this in Hartford County? So it started really as I went to um, my daughter's dance studio, uh, Ragebox Dance Center in Forest Hill. And I had a relationship with them. I had done a bunch of photos Mm -hmm. for them um, in the the year prior. And I said, by chance, do you have like five or six senior kids that would be interested in like, like a photo marketing team? And the director gave me the names of six girls. I sent a message to them and their moms. And I said, this is a pilot program. I really am not sure of all the logistics, but I envision it being like three different fun, creative photo shoots. We'll incorporate some ways to like give back in the community along mm-hmm. the way. Um, and all you need to do is book your senior session with me. Yeah. Like that's all you have to do. And they were like, yes, absolutely. And literally like the meetup that you attended in the rain yeah. up the stairs, <laughs> the, that meeting that year. So this was the, the graduating class of 2020. So they would have been in 2019. It was an April day in my house. I had, Six girls, <laughs> six moms. I got a platter of Chick Fil A, <laughs> and I set up a backdrop, and we just literally sat around and I explained to them what like my vision for the program was, yeah. and they were all on board like immediately. That's so exciting. And the the cool thing about them was they all knew each other because they all danced together, yeah. so they were already like a tight knit group. Um, and the first photo shoot planning it was like a, a hot mess. <laughs> um, I partnered with a boutique that's actually no longer in business. Yeah. Um, the Velvet Trunk was on Main okay, Street. Yeah. Um, she gave me the outfits. I brought in um, Flirt Beauty Company and they did the hair and the makeup. And I mean, it was the hottest day of, I think it was June or July. It was like 9 million degrees outside. We shot at Be More Licks down okay, in Baltimore. Yeah. And the photo, I was like, oh my gosh, like this came to life. All this hard work yeah. and make it, it said, this came to life. And those photos like took off. Like all the girls were sharing them. Everyone was oh, like, so oh fun. my gosh, these are so unique and different. Um, and then when I, when it came around to the next year, I was like, I need to like actually have an application. Like mm-hmm. I can't just handpick every team. Yeah. And I think I had 30 kids apply. Or was no. that my year? Um, no, this was the year before you. Oh, okay. um, I'm lying. I had 22 kids apply and I took them all yeah. because I couldn't, I was like, ah, that's so many. I don't know what to do. And I took them all. And that was the year I did Clueless. Okay. So that was yes. the year before you. Yes. We, our first big shoot with them was a Clueless theme. And again, I researched I movies that. that had anniversaries coming up and Clueless came up. And I was like, oh, best 90s movie ever. Or like half, <laughs> it was their 25th anniversary. It was perfect. Um, so then that year we built from there. And then your year I had, I think it was 40 kids apply. Yeah. Um, and I took, oh my gosh, how many were on your team? 18 or 20, somewhere around there? I think so. Um, and then this past year I had close to 50 and I have 21 
for 22 um, kids oh, yeah. apply. But the whole point of it was to get my name out in high schools. And the funny thing was is I wasn't getting direct referrals. It wasn't like Jenna sent me five kids. Yeah. But the photos that I was doing with them were getting out into the community and people were coming to me saying, oh my gosh, I saw your Clueless shoot. I have to work with you. Yeah. And so the program kind of started growing more so from the creative shoots, oh, cool. not necessarily from the kids that were on the team, which is a little different than how I thought right. it would go. Yeah. Um, but it started out as this kind of grassroots effort. And now I love the camaraderie that the team has and the way that they all build each other up every year yeah. because you all meet at this like initial meetup and you know, the class of 2021, sadly, like, or no, hold on. Yes. You were the class 22. Yeah. The class of 2021 with COVID happening, we didn't have, like our meetup was outside on the parking garage oh, really? and it was like, I just got to get pictures of you to post to like announce you. Yeah. So we, there wasn't as much cor- like camaraderie with that team, but yeah. your year, yeah. like the first, like the first meetup, everyone got to meet each other and we all did the tie dye like t-shirts so and yeah. like, that was like an example of this team really is about yeah. connecting kids from all different schools. And that when you have your pictures done, you have 20 comments already right. from all the kids on the team that are telling you you're beautiful. Yeah. And so Which there's so no fun. worry of, oh, no one's going to like my yeah. photo because you already have this like innate group, group that was created yeah. that's all rooting for you from the, from the get-go. Right. So um, it's funny that it started like as this marketing effort and now it's evolved into something that I really hope stays more so for yeah. the message that it brings like these kids are like I call them DOP reps now it's become this kind of like cute little like monogram you know DOP rep it's a hashtag and everything you know I wear this shirt no one I guarantee you when I was traveling in California last week no one's like what the heck is this DOP rep (laughs) and people are like dope rep like what I'm like well I mean I guess we're pretty dope I guess I'm not cool enough to say that word apparently but um I feel like it's evolved into this yeah. like, thing and I hope that it continues to grow and I can collect kids from, I mean, you guys were my first NDP kids, yeah. you know, that I, I'm hoping that, of, yeah, yeah, like I can collect. Which I remember, like, I think it definitely has evolved because when we were, after that first, so your 2021 group, we have lots of friends in common, which I didn't know, Yes, <laughs> but we had like maybe four different people send us like your application and like whether they were mom's friends and they were like oh you have to get your girls into this like they have to apply yeah. and I remember us signing up for the zoom and we were like okay Kenzie this is what you're gonna say and I'm gonna yeah. say this <laughs> and we were like Desiree you guys were the cutest you were we were like sitting next to each other and we we're like how's she gonna tell who's who like, I <laughs> honestly will still I mixed you up apparently yeah. <laughs> earlier this month so it's all good no yeah um but so we were talking about like you want to keep the message for the seniors so what is like the one thing I mean, I'm sure there's many, but what's like one thing you want to teach the seniors, especially during that group of people, that group that you have during that time? One of my biggest things, and it falls back on something I already said, is this idea of like being you yeah. and original and owning who you are. Mm-hmm. And my goal as a, not even just with the rep, but as a senior photographer is everyone's different. Mm-hmm. So like your session, you sent me inspiration. Your session shouldn't look exactly like those photos right. because you aren't that person in them. Yeah. So my goal is to, to make every person really accept what makes them unique, what they love, mm-hmm. what their style is. Like I, I just had a call with um, like a boy client yesterday oh, cool. or maybe two days ago. I don't want him to show up in khakis and a polo <laughs> if that's not something that he wears. Yeah. If a kid wears vans and ripped jeans and like t-shirts and a hat, like, okay, great. Let's go downtown yeah. with a skateboard and document who that child is. Or right. I say child, you guys are adults, virtually <laughs> adults, but you know, who that person is at that time. Right. Um, and with these reps, like, you shouldn't worry about, like, if you want to wear, like, your David Bowie shirt, yeah. like, you should rock your David Bowie shirt. <laughs> you should, if you yeah. love pink, you yeah. should wear pink. You shouldn't be like, well, right. you know, it's really, everyone's wearing more, like, neutral tones now, and, like, I need to, like, I will never on stop trend. <laughs> like, own who you yeah. are. And I think it, at your age, and I say you loosely, at teenagers' age, everyone's on social media, and they want to yeah. be the next influencer or follow the newest trend or whatever, but, yeah. like, if that's not you, don't try to fit into that mold. Right. Like, so owning who you are is really important. And then also uncovering each person's beauty. Right. My favorite thing about photographing, hands down, and I think I did it with you guys. Yeah. I take a picture. And you've, in the beginning, everyone feels a little nervous. Like, am I doing it <laughs> right? We? Is my hair right? <laughs> did my outfit turn out okay? When I turn around my camera and I show, and it's not even edited. I didn't yeah. touch it yet. It's in my camera. The most people, the reaction is, 
oh my gosh, that's me. <laughs> that was Kenti and I. That's me. You're like, uh. And oh, by the way, for your session, you didn't have hair and makeup. Yeah. You picked out your own clothes. You didn't have a stylist pick out your clothes like a celebrity would. Yeah. I didn't put a single photo in Lightroom or Photoshop right. yet. So what you saw on that little three by three square like, on the back of my camera is yeah. you. Yeah. And the fact that kids can look in a mirror and not feel pretty. Right. And I can take a picture and show them their beauty. Mm -hmm. To me, that makes my job yeah. like, you know. Everything. So rewarding. Yeah. So, you know, I know you asked about like the rep specifically, but yeah, it's yeah. a general message. No, yeah, no. This definitely. whole idea of embracing who you are, but realizing yeah. that who you are is beautiful. You don't need to change. You don't need to cut your hair or dye your hair or change your nose or whatever that yeah. might be, you know, to, to be beautiful. You yeah. are. And even like today, um, and I remember us talking about this. I think this was like, so this is at, you know, that our first rep meeting. Um, and you were telling us about like how you really just don't want to show the girls like, like basically what you just said. We don't need to use all the filters, all the editing. So today I know tons of people and I even kind of get myself sucked into whether I need to edit this or edit that. Um, in editing, where do you think that stems from for somebody to think that they have to edit? I'm sure it's like a bunch of different things, but what do you personally think that, why do people feel like they have to edit themselves? I think because it's available. Yeah. I think that when you log on to Instagram, if you have a choice, I mean, and I, I'm guilty. Right. If I'm, for a while there, I was posting like workout selfies for mm -hmm. a long time. I've kind of gotten out of the habit <laughs> of it, but every Friday I would post like, yeah. I finished my week, I did all my workouts. I look like terrible <laughs> after a workout. So I'm guilty of it too. If I want to feel better about myself so I don't like have these awful wrinkles all over my face because I just finished a workout, I have no yeah. makeup on, and that makes me feel good, like, okay, fine. But we have yeah. access to it. Right. So if, if you get in the habit of always applying that filter, yeah. of course you're going to do it. And then you lose sight of who you are. So then when you see like a picture that doesn't have a yeah. filter on it, you're like, what in the world? Right. Um, for me, when I edit, yes, I'm going to get rid of your blemishes. Yeah. Like no one wants to have a zit on their face right. when they're spending money on professional photos. Yeah. So like, yes, of course, I'm going to take care of those things. But I'm not one that's, if you don't like, I don't know, if you have wider hips, and this is more like probably in an older generation, yeah. I'm not going to take a liquify tool and shrink your hips <laughs> because you don't like them. Yeah. Like... We have access to all these things. What's the one app? I can't Facetune. Yeah. Like all of you have Something Facetune, like and it's yeah. easy. Like oh, I can just go on and take all of the, my imperfections away. Yeah. And it, yes, you have the ability to do that, but like you don't need to. Right. And I want to show you. Like when you saw your pictures, I didn't really do. I mean, I make moderate tweaks right, to them no. so that the lighting and the no, colors yeah. look accurate. I'm not changing anything about you. Right. Even like if you had some frizzy parts of your hair, like I'm yeah. not going to get rid of every <laughs> like piece Girl, of frizz. No editing can fix that, you know. But that's, <laughs> but like that's, no. but that's you. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, like I don't want to change who you are. Right. Um, and I do think we as a society, because those filters are there and everyone keeps making them and they keep getting worse. And I mean, they keep getting like, we're, we're way more smooth in every single filter that comes <laughs> out. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, I think they can be used, let's call it responsibly. I mean, right, if I'm yeah. pale in the dead of winter and I want to look a little bit more tan right. and that makes me feel good about me, then yeah. sure, like right. go for it. But um, I'm not a fan of like highly over edited the crazy. Yeah. Um, photos. Like I really pride myself on like a natural edit, a true yeah. color edit. I'm not going to like oversaturate right. um, so that someone looks orange in their pictures. <laughs> like, I know that's like a trendy thing right yeah. now. Um, Cause I still do want to appreciate you in your yeah. true like form and beauty. And you know, I mentioned I include makeup with my sessions this year. That's not because I don't want to see your natural beauty. Oh, yeah. Number one, I want to enhance what you already have, but I also want to make the experience special. Right. So like starting off with makeup, I mean, you had makeup done for like our editorial right. shoot. It's like, it is a treat. Yeah, I mean, if is. I could have my makeup done every day, I would. Yeah. Not because I want like to hot, like I don't do a good enough job myself, but it's like a pampering thing. So the reason I'm including makeup is to enhance your Pamper. natural beauty and give you a really so glammed fun. up experience. Yeah. Because, oh, by the way, you are graduating high school. You just completed 12 years of high school. And most of you are going on to college, right. like your next step. These will be the last pictures you take before you get married. Just yeah. put that in perspective. Most parents like cry when I tell them that. I, but like, you might get a senior picture in college. I don't have one. Like kids now will like do pictures with their friends, yeah. like when they're grad, but they're not, you're not getting portraits oh, yeah. taken. Um, I mean, you're lucky enough you have like a built-in best friend. So like <laughs> for you to have pictures taken in Alabama when you graduate would be amazing. But like most kids aren't getting like professional. Right. So like these, yeah. 
document the culmination. And oh, by the way, I bet your parents had pictures taken when you were a newborn and when you turned one and when you turned two and three and they kind of fade out. When you're like no, five, yeah. you don't, if, I mean, even no. my kids, this is sad. I don't think I had photos taken until, I think it was always a school photo. Yeah. We had just newborn photos and then we always just had those year school photos. I exactly. Think, yeah. And they document who you are, but like, right. You're in a uniform, most yeah. most of them, right? Yeah. Like if you're going to private school, so you got to show you love fashion in your session. You know, you got to showcase that. So oh, like, so much fun. But even like, so Kenzie and I, like, I talk like to talk like like to hear you say about the staying natural because all of your like even if you go to your Instagram, like everything looks so different. Yet it's it's all combined, but everybody looks different. Everybody has a different vibe. Like each post is a different vibe, but it all like fits well together. But even like Kenzie and I during our shoot, like it didn't feel exactly the same. Like the way that you, with the photos, like Kenzie's felt like her vibe mm-hmm. and then mine felt like my vibe. Whether, and then we were wearing like to, like different outfits, but still like you had this way of making it feel like, oh, that was my own personal shoot and this is Kenzie's and we still like could see the differences in our personality, but yet it all came together in a way. It's, thank you for saying that. Because no, honestly, I, I hadn't heard that from you guys before. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I do get from a lot of clients, like from the parent, they'll say, you truly captured the essence or the personality yeah. of my child. And you guys are twins. Yeah. So that's like a much harder feat. And it's funny that you say that, because I do think they even look yeah. a little, like the way the lighting was hitting or yeah. whatever. Um, but it's it makes me happy yeah. that you but say that. But even like putting our posts together. Like if you go and look at the posts with that I shared of all of those photos, and then you look at Kenzie's. And even like I say, as we're like using those photos for like, college and stuff like that um like sorority recruitment we're seeing the photos and we're like okay this post actually gives a different vibe to this post but it was the same shoot but then you put us together and it's all one vibe you know what i mean so it's like it kind of like it's very interesting that's very interesting yeah i'm like how did i do that (laughs) i don't even know what the secret sauce was there i don't know well that's great um so uh, which this actually this question brings up a funny story but so (laughs) most people feel this is the question that i'm going to go into well, let's just do the story first then. So, like, remem- I remember, like, again, I'll always, like, go back to this, but the first rep shoot that we did, um, now my sister has always been, like, kind of more comfortable in front of the camera. Like, Kenzie, I always followed, like, whether we were just taking photos of ourselves or we were at the beach and she could go to pose, and I was like, mm, I don't know how to do that. I disagree. Um, <laughs> I think you both are wrong. <laughs> But so we were doing that first shoot, and we were actually – we were maybe the first ones in the you room. Were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were the first ones to go into the room. You were like, who wants to go? And we were like, okay, fine, we'll go first. And um, in the beginning, I was like, I feel so uncomfortable. Like, like, what, do I look right? Am I doing this mm-hmm. right? And Kenzie got out there. She'll say she did it, but she did. She was like, already she was doing all the moves. <laughs> and Desiree's like, yes, yes. Yeah. You're still doing it for me. But I was like, why does this feel weird? But so a lot of people, this goes to my question, a lot of people feel uncomfortable in front of the camera. So what do you do or... Like, how during your shoots, how do you make so- someone feel comfortable? Or how do you try to make someone feel comfortable? So, number one, I'm very loud. I have a <laughs> lot of energy. Um, and I talk a lot. Mm-hmm. That's my husband. Um, <laughs> to me, it's, it's positive reinforcement and feedback. Mm-hmm. So, I genuinely, when I'm, like, shooting, get excited. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what. I mean, even at your shoot, we were at Sherwood Gardens. Like, if, like, the sun's Hilarious. hitting right and the flowers <laughs> are right. Like, I am literally, like you said, I'm like, yes. Yes, you're like, yes, yes, go, go. But I think, but that's not, that's not fake. Like, yeah. I'm not, like, hyping you up because no, I'm yeah. trying to make you comfortable. No, definitely. Like, I'm naturally going to do that yeah. in anything. Um, and on, ask my husband on the lacrosse field. I'm the same way watching my daughter's lacrosse games. I'm, I'm very loud and, and vocal. But I think it's that that is what loosens most kids up. Right, I yeah. think that me being like, oh, you know, Madison, that was great. Like, do that yeah. one more time. Or can you do this? And then when you do this, do that. And oh, yeah, that looks great. I'm giving you direction. You're doing it. And then I'm giving you direct feedback. And most times it's positive. And even if I want you to change something, yeah. I try to be very cognizant of keeping it positive. I'm not gonna be like, oh God, really? That was terrible. (laughs) Like, I'm gonna be like, oh, that was great. But next time, let's do it this way. Or if it's not working, I'm a big fan of like, let's just go over here. And we just scrap what we were working on, take a little break and go back. And I do think one of my strong suits um, is the guiding of the posing. Yeah. Like, I feel like, you know, Anybody can take senior photos. Like a family photographer could easily take senior photos. But one of the things I think that's important is directing you in Mm -hmm. a way that your poses look natural, bring out your personality, and look like you weren't posing. 
Like yeah. they look like you just happened to, I had a camera and you just strike to pose and it happened naturally. Yeah. Um, so if I can guide you, give you clear directions, sometimes I'm not very clear. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> look that way and what's that way? I don't know, right? Left. Um, give you clear direction, but then really like hype you up. I One of the things I like when I was updating my website this year, like I'm like your personal hype girl. Yeah. So like I'm taking the pictures, but I'm also behind the scene, like cheering you on every second of the way. So when you leave, you're like, man, I am so good. I did such a great job. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Um, and no, I can test that. Kenzie and I literally, I think during our, whether we, which one was shooting or which, who wasn't, was always laughing. Like I can remember that yes. at my shoot. I think I was like nonstop laughing because you were like, yes, go. And we were like running across the yes. field for the perfect, like yes. the sun to hit us. And then we were like, yes, this is good. Yes. We're crushing our goals. Like you I You guys were it. great though because you had each other yeah. to play off of. So when it's, if you have just one of like one yeah. senior, sometimes the mom will come, which I mean, I encourage, I think it's a really fun experience yeah. for like someone to come, but sometimes mom puts an energy in there that like halts the kid from opening up. So sometimes we'll be like, you know, mom will like shift over here and yeah. then the kid starts to open up a little bit. Right. Um, but you guys had each other to play off of. No, it's fun. So you had like an extra And she'll be honest, girl. she'll be like, mess this little hair right yes. here. Yeah, yeah, she'll yeah. be like, she, like she'll yes. do it all. But I, another reason why I show you what's on the back of the camera, because once you see, like I have a lot of you guys doing like, all right, you're going to flip your hair and then right. you're going to walk away and you're going to flip over your right shoulder and you're like, what in the world am I doing? But when I show you, you're like, oh, I felt really like yeah. goofy, but the photo actually looks Turns out really so good. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so going back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier with you finding a passion for photography, um, what gave you the confidence to start, you know, what was like the push? What, where did you find your confidence to start your own brand business in it? Oh, um, honestly, I'm going to go back just a oh, yeah. little bit. So Very before good. I actually like started taking photos and charging people and, yeah. and building this business. So I quit my job at Black & Decker um, when my daughter was born. Okay. I told my husband I just wanted a year to figure out like what I wanted to do. I didn't want to necessarily go back like nine to five. I took six months and was like, I need to do something. So I didn't do anything for six months. And I was like totally, I wasn't bored, but I just needed to use like my creative brain and skill sets in some way. So six months in, um, I started doing freelance marketing. So that was kind of yeah. like my first, like starting my own thing. Mm -hmm. So it was already kind of there. Um, then when my son was born, I couldn't manage that workload. It was crazy. My son actually had a bunch of health issues when he was little. So he right. was like in and out of hospitals, like for his first, like two years of life. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't do much. I, my, my life was him. Right. Um, and there was a point where I was like, I, who am I? Like right. I had no sense of self. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember we were living in a condo building our house. I was miserable. Yeah. And I needed something. And a friend of mine um, did like a multi-level marketing um, jewelry business, Stella mm -hmm. and Dot. Oh yeah, and, Stella and Dot. Yeah. I know that, yeah. Yeah, and I was so against it for like the longest time. Yeah. And I was like at a point where I'm like, I need something or I'm gonna break. And so I became a stylist. And honestly, that was probably my biggest confidence boost of becoming like, just a mom that did freelance marketing from home to like a mom that was refocused on right. building a business. And because there was low risk, I mean, you paid like 400 bucks to sign up to right. do it. It was very low risk. And I made such a great group of friends from the beginning. And the whole reason I did that was I wanted to build a website yeah. for photography, but I didn't have the money to do it because I wasn't working. Right. So I did that to essentially pay for the photography business, but then I loved it so much that I, Basically was like, well, this is easier than me building a photography business from scratch. Yeah. I'll just put that over to the side because yeah. that's going to take much longer than it is for this business. Okay. And so I did that for two years. And that was like the conf that was the catalyst right. for me being like, okay, I built this business from nothing right. with a little bit of help. I can 100% build. So it, I did that for two years and it was the fall of 2018. And I was like, I'm ready to finally, because I had, now I had the money that I could, I had enough money for a website and a new camera and a new lens because I had earned all this money in that business. And so in 2018, it was that wedding that I talked mm -hmm. about earlier that it was like, okay, so I'm good enough. I have the confidence that I can do my, right. like do this business. I know how to run it. I mean, I had to figure out a lot along the way. I mean, I built a website from scratch, which <laughs> I am not a website designer at all. Like, thank you Wix for making easy <laughs> templates that I've learned to use and work with. But, um, like I learned all those things like along the way, but like almost realizing my worth that, okay, I was like 
a badass marketer back right. in the day. Yeah. Like I managed a group of people. I just kind of needed to rediscover that yeah. like fire inside of me right. and then build the confidence that, okay, I, I can do this. And yeah. I don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect to start. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you first started this, you didn't have all the answers oh, figured no. out. Oh I mean, yeah, I mean, did you think you would be like in New York interviewing no. like the director of and like the One then, Love Foundation? Like, I'll like, tell Evan all the time. I'm like, like before doing a couple of interviews, I'm like, okay, I feel sick to my stomach. I'm going to take five seconds to breathe yes. and then do it because it's almost like, oh, am I supposed to be doing this? Whatever. But, I still get nervous yeah. when I go to weddings. Literally the morning of a wedding because there's so much pressure with that. Yeah. Senior photo- like senior photos, like... If I miss the shot, we'll just redo it. Yeah. At a wedding, you miss the shot, that's not good. <laughs> My first wedding, I remember waking up and I was like, babe, I can't eat anything. I am so yeah. nervous. And he's like, you'll be fine. And after that wedding, I was like, oh, okay, I did it. Yeah. I'm, I, I did a great job. And then the next one, I'm like nervous again. Yeah. And he, I just did a wedding like two weeks ago. And I'm, I get nervous up until the bride walks down the aisle. And you're like, this is And it. then once I get the shot of the bride walking down the aisle in the first kiss, I'm like, this, <laughs> this is cake. Great. This is cake. Yeah. And then you go home and you look at the pictures and you're like, okay. Right. I, I'm in the like, right place. Sense. I did. Yeah. I, I was so nervous. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I've trained myself I know how to shoot in different settings. Yeah. I know, you know, different like this wedding that rained twice. Like I know, like you know, all the things I need to do to make sure that we can get everything done. Yeah. Um, and it, part of this was experience. The more you do right. it, the more that like now seeing. I mean, I remember my first family shoot. I would go to a session an hour before and scope <laughs> out the location and be like, okay, so we're gonna go over here first, and then we're gonna go over here, and yeah. then we're gonna. Go over, and I would like take test photos in each like spot and make yeah. sure my. Now I'm like on the fly, yeah. like. I have one of my clients, they want to shoot in um, Westminster. And I'm like, just send me some photos of like the places and I'll show up like 15 minutes before and I can change on the fly. And part of that's just through experience. No, it's hilarious. Before I asked this question, I was like, when we were doing our senior shoot, we're like, where is, De- oh, here comes Desiree. You're like holding all these thousand bags, yeah. walking down, yep, my- like speed walking. Yep. Like, I'm ready to go. Walk. And you were like, yeah. okay, girl. So I've just walked the, yep. walked around and we're good. And you put up the changing tent, like in front of someone's Whoop. house. You're yep. like, let's get into let's it. Get, let's and we were go. like following, even though yep. like you're so tiny, we were like, we're following her. <laughs> we're going, we're going. And I really like, forget that I'm short sometimes. And you're like, I- you're, <laughs> so you're like, get into the bush, but don't make it seem weird. You know? Yes, because I don't want to get in <laughs> trouble. trouble. <laughs> yes, no, yeah. But you did um, touch on this a little bit in that last answer, but what would your advice be to those who are like struggling to make their passion, if they want to make their passion into, you know, what they want to do full time? What would your advice be to those women? Take the first step. You, yeah. I mean, I'd still be sitting here if I said no to that wedding. Yeah. Like I'd be sitting here and not where I am today. If I didn't go ask the owner at Ragebox for six kids, right. I still would be trying to figure out, am I good enough to have an application for a team, mm-hmm. you know, of a group of seniors that are gonna right. be like my ambassadors for the year. Um, it's taking that leap yeah. and it's really scary, you know? And I mean, some things obviously more scary than others, right? Like the investment for me to start a photography business was not like $100,000. It wasn't like I'm trying to open up like the next, you know, franchise or whatever, and I need like a loan from a bank. Like, I mean, I understand within reason that some things aren't as easy as just taking the step. Yeah. Um, but, you know, believing in yourself and having the confidence, like, you know, you like applying to Alabama. I mean, you yeah. just do it. Yeah. Take you, the risk. And if you don't, and if you don't get in, you don't get in. Yeah. And if you do, then you live your dream, yeah. you know, doing that. Right. You're never going to know unless you give it a shot. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I talk, I talked about this with Katie Hood. Like it always fascinates me, like the impact of a decision. And that's why I'm like, what, that's what fascinates me is that that's why I keep saying like, oh, I'll do this or, hey, I'll go meet this person or I'll reach out to this person. Because I mean, there are some opportunities that you have to say no to. You can't do it all. But sure. I'm also thinking like, okay, what, where is this going to lead me? And I also think that that's why I tell younger girls, it's like someone was, said the other day, like I can't run, run a marathon. I'm like, girl, I could have believed that. But listen, I didn't, and I just trained for however long I need to train for, well, and you then put your mind it. to it, right? You know, and so I think that like, like as women and even girls, just understanding that oh, this risk might take me down. This might not be the best step. Like whether, and I just talked about this with Katie Hood. She was like, oh, this might go. This decision might take me. Yeah, and then just down a little bit. Um, but then you're gonna learn from that, and then like also seeing like what you can do with that after. I just think that you know, all decisions line up and like whether going to Alabama, like I'm so excited. Also know that there's going to be highs and lows, but just knowing that, oh, this is like, this was the right spot for me because yes. I'm, I'm here now. You know what yes. I mean? So, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, you look at, and I talked about at the very beginning. Yeah. I was with 
Black and Decker right. for you almost imagine. nine years, that. working my way up like the ladder. Yeah. Honestly, leaving that job was, and that was saying no. Yeah. Like that, I wasn't saying yes. I was saying yes to my family. Yeah. But like I was saying no to a job that was very good to me. And even still to this day when I talk about it, you would think I still work there. Yeah. I had such loyalty to that company. Like some of my best friends came from that company. I, I mean, we to this day, we're still buying DeWalt and Black & Decker power tools in our house <laughs> because I'm so loyal to that company. My husband right. the other day is like, I might buy a Ryobi. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, we're not. DeWalt only in this house. Um, leaving that job. Yeah. Like that was me saying no. And that decision has changed yeah. my whole trajectory. Because if I would have stayed there, like- right. Who knows? I mean, Where I look at all Desiree those decisions. <laughs> well, like, I mean, would I have, like, would right. I have my son? Would I have had my son when I had my son? Right. Would I have only had one child because yeah. I was too overwhelmed with, like, the stress of having that job, you know? And then I, I look, I'm like, you know, there's a girl that I started with that's now, like, in a VP or president role there. Right. Would that be me? Yeah. And, and is that the life that I was supposed to lead? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I love where I'm at now. I love that I have the freedom yeah. to control, like, my this business. And if I needed to, if my family... We had like a health struggle, you know, my, my dad recently went in a nursing home and mm-hmm. I've had to like scale back so that I can provide, you know, time to right. take care of him as well. So, you know, those things wouldn't have been possible if I was still working a 40 right. hour week. So that no right. was a decision, led all this. Yeah. but led me to all that. Yeah. Um, and that was scary. I mean, yeah. leaving that comfort, I mean, my salary and my insurance and like that Everything. level of comfort. I mean, yeah. that was a big risk for my husband and I to take. I mean, at that time, I mean, my husband has a job now and like, he provides for us and I'm so forever grateful. Yeah. But like, literally, I remember we were walking my daughter with our little yellow up a baby stroller down the street. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think I wanna live this life. I don't wanna work 40 hours a week and miss her growing up. Like, yeah. I, I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to like get her from the bus and everything. And he, yeah. he said, okay, I support you. And take the time you need to figure it out. And if after a year we were like, poor and couldn't afford our yeah, home no. then i would have gone back right. you know and but we made it work and yeah. he's been really supportive of me building this business and it's a lot of evening hours i mean we're t- we're literally like high five and not figuratively <laughs> not literally but like he comes home from work and he'll take yeah. like the kids to sports and i'm out shooting and i don't get home till nine at night right. um but it also allows me to get our kids to school right at 9 a.m and now middle school next year that's another <laughs> early wake up call uh, um and get them off of the bus yeah. and get them to all other things or if they have doctor's appointments right um this business allows me to yeah. do that so and i think even though like having your husband or whoever it is in your life having a partner um like and we'll, my family will even talk about it like when dad um left got fired slash whatever happened there um from his real estate job and he was like discovering what he wanted to do and go into sales training and you know leaving his first sales training job um and then discovering you know what i'm good enough to start my own company Mm -hmm. and like my parents had no idea where this was going i mean we were both in private school two kids at once like doing all these sports club swim like we were doing all these things and my mom's like okay yeah. my, and my mom's and we were like okay let's just see and, but they like always believe that they, each other could do it and yeah. like you know you have your family and that's all you need um but also just seeing where things take you like yeah. where we are now oh yeah right it's crazy i yeah i would have never i mean i remember like so going back to social media i feel like it's all like looped back to social media i remember starting my page and having like 500 followers and being like one day i'm gonna have a thousand <laughs> you know and like now i'm like yeah. oh wow i almost have four thousand followers yeah. like Right. I'm the account that I used to like look up to. Look I mean, those to. are things that you just didn't think would yeah. happen. And like I mean, it's been five years, you know, yeah. they're like little wins and it doesn't yeah. matter how many followers I have. No. Yeah. Is that any inkling of my success? No. But is that like a little marker yeah. that was a goal at the beginning that I didn't think yeah. was and possible? And it's like fun to look back at. I mean, did that. you think you would yeah. have like a cute little logo and sweatshirts <laughs> with your, th- I mean, I, if I see a kid wearing like my yeah. DOP sweatshirt or t-shirt, I'm like, oh my god <laughs> they love me they really love me um it's just it's 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 funny yeah. it's funny to look back on um so this is a hard question well for me it would be but i think to put like there's many different answers um what does beautiful mean to you because your life is built around capturing beauty mm. so how would you describe beautiful that is such a tough one it's more than just face value yeah because Someone can have a beautiful face, but not not so beautiful inside. Yeah. Um, it to me, kindness is the root of all, and I feel like 
the more people believe from within Mm -hmm. that they're beautiful and show kindness to others, it makes them more beautiful as a person. Right. That I think beauty, I think has this, you know, you think about, oh, there's beauty stores and beauty products and Mm -hmm. that's all around makeup and hair products and things like that. And that's all like surface value. But like what really makes someone genuinely beautiful, it's all, all encompassing. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, I have a daughter who's 11 Mm -hmm. and we're getting into like, we're going to middle school and like. You know, we have, she hasn't really like started to like express like, oh, I'm pretty or not pretty or yeah. this person's pretty or anything like that. Um, the thing we've always tried to instill in her is like, you are kind to everyone. And yeah. like, ultimately that will make her a beautiful person. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of my favorite people in like the world, they're beautiful because of what's inside of them, right. you know? Yeah. And that makes them almost more attractive on the outside because right. you can see, you know, where their heart is. Yeah. Um, and I, I almost wish that like the word beauty wasn't attached right. to, to looks. looks. Yeah. Um, and I, point. sadly, I do think like our society and social media, yeah. it doesn't help with that. Yeah. Cause we, you know, there's, I think a very unsafe bar that's set Mm-hmm. of what that standard is. Cause you have all these influencers that are probably face tuned out the yeah. wazoo and you don't know what they really you know, right. look like. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's hard to really like strip down and be like, you know, that person might be beautiful in that photo, yeah. but like, let's look at them as like a whole, right. like we're all whole yeah. humans. And even like with your photos, yes, I want you to like them and feel beautiful looking at them, but like, I want them to be a representation of everything as a whole you know i mean you you and your sister you're like bright lights in this world (laughs) thank you but your phone i mean you're wearing like bright Bright pink pink (laughs) and white and you're in like gorgeous glowy sun i want that to be projected in your exactly photos so yeah and i think you know like even to like middle school like i'm like your daughter like i'm gonna become her bestie because middle school i feel is like one of the hardest times (sighs) for for all girls yeah um but your daughter seems great. And she yes. I feel like she's very mature for where she's at right now. Um, and I, again, I'm living through like your, <laughs> your Instagram and Facebook. But I feel like we can get sucked into like, you know, compar- comparison, such a huge thing, seeking validation. Yes. Because like yes. whether you're like looking at this influencer, maybe she got work done here or here. Yeah. And like we're sitting here and we're like, why don't I look like that? And just, you know, it's almost a point where you get to switch the flip and be like, okay, you know what? You don't know what happened, what she's got going on. Right. You don't know if she's editing that photo. And I kind of like look at it. I'm like, that's a great photo. Like, but then I'm also like looking at my feet. I'm like, this is what I want to show of myself. Yes. And like, this is how I want to portray myself on social media. And you never know if someone's looking up to you and is like saying that same stuff to you. Cause I'm sure we're all comparing of each other. So I think it's social media is a huge thing, but also just making this community feel of like, okay, we can all be here together, but also like, you know what? Everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own edits that they're doing behind photos or whatever they're doing. So yeah. But yeah. Yeah. No, very good yeah. way to think about it. Um, so I have two questions I end every podcast okay. with. But um, this one's no, so oh boy. let's add it. Oh. Um, but do you enjoy enjoy reading? If so, what's a oh. go-to book for you? I, this is probably the like, oh, yeah. worst. I'm not a reader. No, didn't we do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a slow reader. Yeah. And as a result, I, it takes me forever to read a book, and I fall asleep a lot I agree. if I'm reading. Yeah. I am, my husband and I both are like TV movie nerds. Yeah. Um, we're just finishing Stranger Things, like that. Oh, it's scary. And what's oh, good? It's really good. <laughs> it is like, scary. There's definitely parts yeah. of it when I was like covering my face the last like couple episodes. But um, like we, when we started dating, we went to four movies the first month we started yeah. dating. We are we are movie people. Yeah. Like that is our thing. Um, for me though, I love podcasts. Yeah. So to me, like if I'm driving, because um, I, I again I fall asleep while reading. Yeah. Um, even I, I've tried like, do I put an audiobook on? I still go to like my like tried and yeah. true podcast, and I love listening. Like, um, even like I love your podcast. Thanks. I love hearing women yeah. um, talk, and I like kind of learning through business. Yeah, um, Armchair Expert, Dak Shepherd's podcast is my favorite. Yeah. I listen to it religiously. <laughs> I have a small obsession, and I'm sad that in California we didn't run into him. But um, but I, I don't. We don't read a lot. My yeah. favorite books That's that nice. I have read Hunger Games, which I'm going to introduce my yeah. daughter to relatively soon. Like, yeah. couldn't put them down. Like, right. Um, and I maybe I haven't found like the right books, or maybe well, okay. I never got into yeah. it. Um, as it, my mother would probably yeah roll over if she. <laughs> so my mother was an English teacher and reads like religiously. Yeah. Um, I just yeah. No, no, so like even like so. I wish I, had, I wish I could have had a, had a good <laughs> answer, Madison. <laughs> and I just told Kat this because Kat like literally said the same answer, but. Um, 
like growing up kenzie and i were always like reading is school and we're going to go play outside for the time that we have we were never really tv watchers because our parents like limited you know an hour of tv a week like it was an hour on the weekends or something like that but we'd always be outside scootering biking you know with the neighbors at the neighbor's house you know doing all this stuff playing like with makeup and dressing up and doing all this stuff um and I didn't get into reading and I'm still don't, I'm not sure if I'm into it yet, but until like a couple, and I say I'm into it, but it's like, I'll go on these tangents of like, I'm a reader. I'm not a reader. Yes. Um, but just a couple months ago with Kenzie, was like, I'm not going to bring my phone to the beach. And I'm just going to read a whole book. And she read a whole book in one day, oh. which Kenzie and I really never read. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, the book that she read was, it ends with us, which was like a popular book. Everybody was recommending it. So she was like, I gotta see what this is all was about. It good? Um, it's really good. Okay. Maybe that's Maybe it would mean reinstill um, my... Um... And, but it's okay. It gives me comfort hearing you say that because dad was never a reader growing up and he was... He reads a lot. He reads he? like, mm-hmm. I don't know how many books a week. But, but he does, doesn't he do more like business focused? Yeah. Like, so it's yeah. more, he doesn't... So we were just talking about this. Like I cannot get into a self-help book. <laughs> I was reading one the other day and mom's like, oh girl, trust me. I tried, you know, your father gave me one. I was like, "Mm -mm, this is not for me. I need like the fiction. I need to like make up these characters. Um, But dad does like, he he reads self-help, but it's not like, oh, this is what you got to do. Boom, boom, boom. It's like more of autobiography, biography of somebody and their story. It's also like them finding themselves or some self-help in it, but it's not like, oh, this is how you become a better person. Yes. You know what I mean? It's not so like written by a He's reading like, and dad loves you. history, so he's reading all these history books, but he never read. So it like gives me hope. Maybe one day I'll be reading like Maybe that. when I'm retired. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I'm way too like go, 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 nonstop yeah. to like sit, sit down. relax. And no, yeah. I will tell you this, when I was trying to get pregnant with Scarlett, yeah. I was like very high strung, like nervous because it wasn't, it was taking longer than I expected. Yeah. And I started reading. And we got pregnant. Oh, really? I was like, like I need. I do down. Well, bit. I left. I would. I, I was at a point where I was like, I'm leaving work at five thirty. Like, no work when I get home because back then we had blackberries. <laughs> really dating myself. <laughs> um, you could still work at home. I would yeah. come home, put all my stuff away, and then I would make dinner and I would sit and read before I went to bed. And like, it was like this calming. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah. like, it, I would or have maybe. to make a conscious effort now yeah. to be like, okay, Pat, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to sit and read. And I'd probably be asleep in five minutes. Yeah. I can barely stay awake Mom was like, when go we put read a TV it, show on at 10 o'clock. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll be asleep in like five minutes. So, yeah. um, no, sadly, I don't have a book. No, Although I okay. do, if I was going to read one, it would be the, um, what's the new movie, Reese Witherspoon? The, oh, where the crawl, crawl yes. dad Where the crawl dad sing. Dad, would, Mom read that book and she was in this office the other day and she was like, <gasps> when she finished it, she loved it. Now she wants to go see the movie with dad. She's like, I want to so see So I would consider reading that book because the movie's coming out and yeah. I love Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, and everyone I know that's read that book said it was outstanding. Yeah. So part of me is Mom like, loved it. I could probably do that, mm-hmm. but I'm one of those people that's like, oh, is that the popular book everyone's talking about? I need yeah. to know what it's about. So yeah. I would, like Hunger Games, Twilight. Yeah, everything like, like I was that. all over those because yeah. everyone was talking about it. I was like, well, I have to know what these books yeah. are about. But, um, but so before I ask the last question, I just want to thank you for being on here. I was like so welcome. excited. Um, it just took us, what, like six months to finally get it. So we just <laughs> needed okay. summer to hit. Well, our schedules, I was like, oh. we're the two of the most, I mean, you're 10 times busier than I am, but still. Nah, I wouldn't discredit um, yourself. <laughs> um, what would you, what was one piece of advice that you would give to the girl that's, you know, struggling with self-confidence, knowing her worth? What would one advice bit that you would give to her? Oh, wow. That's a good one. I... It's funny because in high school, people would probably say I was like a popular kid. Yeah. I definitely really didn't have a sense of confidence until I went to college. Okay, interesting. Um, and I just think that was maturity. Right. I think, yeah. and I think in high school, you get pigeonholed into different pockets yeah, of definitely. groups. Yeah. Um, almost like a no- ignore the noise. Yeah. I think that we are, you have so much, especially now with social media, like I didn't have, we didn't have Instagram or Facebook or we mm-hmm. didn't even have cell phones when I was in high school. Thank God we didn't have them when I was in college. I'm like, all the things that could potentially be documented, yeah. like, I am so happy we didn't have any of those platforms when I was in college. But all the noise, like, there's so much noise. Yeah. I mean, if you went to school, you might not hear someone talking behind your back. Right. You know, if you didn't have social media or Instagram right. or Snapchat, yeah, Snapchat or whatever. Yeah. Um, ignore it. Yeah. And if, if something is toxic to you, you don't need it. Right. No one says you have to be on Instagram or mm-hmm. Snapchat. Um, I mean, I've, I got off Facebook for six months, yeah. um, back when my son was sick because I just couldn't deal with like everyone having a perfectly healthy child right. going on vacation. And we were in hospitals every other right. week. Um, cut it, cut it off. Yeah. Like you don't need that. Listen to you inside. Don't, 
don't let those influences seep in, you mm-hmm. know, and, and be you. Yeah. You don't need to change who you are to That's please awesome. somebody else. Yeah. Find your group. Like, you know, if you feel like you don't fit in one place, find a place where you can be you. Yeah. You know, there's no need to be like, oh, I want to like hang out with like the, the jocks and like, yeah. you know, the kids that are all in sports. And so I'm going to try to like fit in there and I'm going to wear their Air Force Ones. And <laughs> you don't need, if you don't like right. that, don't. Don't do, do that. It. Yeah. Um, because, and that's a message. I mean, even with my daughter, like, you know, she was figuring out what nail color she wanted. And it's like, you pick what you like. Yeah. I, it doesn't trendy. matter if I like it. Yeah. And this is, this, I'm just your mom. Yeah. I don't have to like what colors on your nails. Yeah. If you want it to be like hot blue, like <laughs> go for it. Um, I'm trying to instill in her, like, don't worry about what other people are going to think. Right. Like, yeah. you know, she's now all of her friends, like they all have these text chains and yeah. stuff now. And she doesn't reply because she's afraid that what she say isn't the right response. Okay. And it's like, but who cares? Yeah. Like, if you have something, if you like the post the yeah. girl just shared, tell her you like her outfit. Yeah. Because in my opinion, it's about building relationships yeah. and stuff. So if you don't put yourself out there, then you're not going to get anything in return. Right. Um, but why do you care what they think? Exactly. And it's so I need to tell myself this sometimes. Yeah. Like, I don't do. care what people think yeah you know with what I'm doing with my business or um you know how much tv my kids watch yeah. or whatever I'm gonna do me yeah um and even like you know to this day like I'm gonna like I'm 40 years old like should I necessarily be wearing like you know a bodysuit and like mom jeans like yeah. would other moms my age be like oh my god you're trying to I, but I like it. Yeah. I like fashion and style. And yeah. I'm going to do me. And I'm going to probably rock that until I'm six <laughs> years old. If I'm in a wedding, do I care that no one's on the dance floor? No, I'm going to go out there and, and <laughs> dance. dance my butt off because I love that. Right. And if other yeah. people think I'm a wacko for dancing all crazy on the dance floor, then go ahead and think that. But when yeah. I was younger, I let all those things kind of get in my get way. Yeah. You know, and stop me because I was afraid, oh, this person is going to judge me because, you know, I did this or I didn't want to do right. that. Um, you know, be be you and don't let all those other noises. I in. love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining Thanks me. For I was so me. excited. I, I was so like, that's fun. right. Yeah, this was really fun. It was like natural. Like it was a, combo, a nice little you know? revisited to like, <laughs> you know, the, the history of this whole business. Yeah. And I think it's been a long, if I haven't gone on an interview for like a job in so long, this is like <laughs> a nice little, like fun little conversation. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And bye everyone. Have a great day. And I cannot wait for the next one.